Hello, my name is Tony and I'm a second year PhD student at MIT with Professor Luca Carlone. Today, I'm excited to present our newest work on 3D scene understanding. In this work, we present a 3D representation of scenes for actionable spatial perception. In many applications, such as mixed augmented reality or autonomous driving, it is important to have a 3D map of the environment that ideally goes beyond the geometry of the scene by semantically labeling the, the object. This is important for high-level understanding, such as in safety-critical applications like self-driving cars, where you want to avoid pedestrians or other cars. Ultimately, we want robots to be able to navigate in indoor environments, potentially interacting with humans. Therefore, there is a need to develop simultaneous localization and mapping algorithms, also known as SLAM, that go beyond accurately estimating the location of the robot and the map of the scene, but that also semantically label the scene. Therefore, previous to this work, we tackled the problem of 3D scene understanding by developing and open sourcing a real-time metric semantic SLAM pipeline that we named Chimera, which is able to reconstruct the 3D geometry while semantically annotating the scene by using uh, visual and inertial data. Here I'm showing a top-down view of a large-scale scene reconstructed by Chimera. I will not have time to present Chimera itself, but let me refer you to our paper for details on how Chimera works. In this talk, I will focus instead on how we turn the raw 3D metric semantic mesh into an actionable 3D representation. To achieve these requirements, we propose a 3D dynamic scene graph, or DSG. A DSG is a tree-like representation that abstracts a dense 3D model, such as a metric semantic mesh, into higher level spatial concepts. For example, objects and agents in layer two, places and structures in layer three, rooms as in layer four, or even buildings in layer five. This representation is compact, modular, scalable, fast to build, and most importantly, actionable, as we will see next. In this work, we use a photorealistic simulator to test our approach. On the top right, you can see a rendered image of the scene. And we also simulated humans in an office space, thereby allowing for dynamic entities, which creates uh, several challenges that we explain later. And we also have objects in the scene that we try to detect, reconstruct, and encode in our DSG. So let's start by describing layer by layer what a DSG encodes. As the first layer, layer of our DSG, we have our 3D metric semantic mesh reconstructed by Chimera. In layer two, we model objects by their 3D centroid, a bounding box, its semantic label, and its instance ID. We distinguish between two types of objects, known, for which we have a 3D CAD model in our database, and unknown, which has no prior 3D model. Still in layer two, we also model dynamic agents, such as humans, robots, and so on. For each agent in the scene, we build a 3D post graph, um, a 3D mesh model describing their potentially non rigid shape over time, and a semantic label. Having dynamic objects in the scene complicates significantly, significantly the state estimation of the robot and the mapping. Therefore, we make use of the semantic and inertial information to counter its effects. Here we show the results of the human tracking module with in blue the post graph edges and in red uh, the detected uh, human. In layer three, we encode places and the structure of the 3D scene. First, we define as a place a region of the scene that is not occupied and where the robot can navigate. Two places are connected by an edge if we can go from one place to the other in a straight path. Therefore, the constructed uh, graph is a topological map and allows for path planning queries. We further detect and represent the 3D structure of the scene as a combination of walls, ceiling, and floor, as can be seen in the left figure. Then in layer four, we extract the room layout of the scene. We encode rooms with a 3D pose, a bounding box, and a semantic label. Connectivity in the graph represents traversability from one room to the other, meaning there is a door connecting both. We do not need to explicitly detect doors, since the topological graph provides us with sufficient information to infer the way rooms can be traversed. Finally, we abstract the 3D scene graph using building nodes. In our case, we have a single building node that encompasses all room nodes. Finally, we have our, our hierarchical 3D scene graph with meaningful connections between different layers that can be exploited for a myriad of applications as we detail in our paper. Thank you very much.